tell them my ego is live. See, let me promise you from the start that you are watching this live is actually a great thing, okay? It is going to be interesting tonight. I mean, if the time allows, I will also manage to take a few calls just before we round up tonight, okay? But sit back, relax after you have shared uh, the broadcast. I'm going to do the same. Get your juice, get your coffee, get your brandy, get everything that can relax you for now and get ready. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yes, you have read the caption of the broadcast. And uh, the caption is a little bit somehow, but I believe I am not the only person thinking about this. And I decided to share that with you tonight. First, we're going to go through the journey of how we got to this level as a people. Who brought us this to this level that uh, the news of the Taliban coming back uh, to power after 20, 20 years, almost 20 years of uh, living power because of their support, alleged support now for terrorism. And the Taliban ran through Kabul today and they took over the country where they have now changed the name of uh, the country to uh, Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. It is no, no, long, no longer an Afghanistan anymore. So people are saying that if uh, Northern Nigeria was to be a country on its own and for the Boko Haram bloody campaign of 12 years, then they probably are not really far from being capable of running over the entire northern Nigeria, which makes up, which makes up uh, of about 70% uh, of the Nigerian land mass. That's a big, massive land to take over. That's going to be, you know. But yes, we can all agree that that is not uh, in any way, uh, what do you call it, impossible. It will happen, and the question there is, what if they overrun the northern Nigeria one day and they declare their emirate or their caliphate, all of these, their uh, one Nigeria, one Nigeria merchant who are heading and abetting all this terrorism in Nigeria from northern Nigeria for the benefit of the power they are you know, currently enjoying, they will run away. Then what will be our own exit plan? I want to talk about that tonight. The journey started from 2014 when those who were sponsoring Boko Haram terrorism in the northeast of Nigeria, harboring them and protecting them, those who were giving them a little bit of a leeway within the Nigerian security forces, which many, many of those arrested and they're questioned have confessed that uh, the process of moving guns weapons all around the northern nigeria including the borders that the, the nigeria sh northern nigeria share with uh, chad ninja uh, and all these places right these guys who are the gun runners the smugglers some of them arrested came back to say their job were made easier because of the collaboration from the Nigerian military or Nigerian soldiers who headed and have, you know, helped them to get those weapons to the terrorists. We have had uh, instances where uh, villagers, communities that were attacked on record before the attack on these communities, they reported the, they reported sighting helicopters, military helicopters, or what do you call, flying over their communities, flying down deep into the forest only for their communities to be attacked two, three days later. And I mean, total military style attack. And thousands of people have been killed for that. So how did we get here other than those who were telling Nigeria 
that those who were killing and kidnapping people in northern Nigeria, they are doing so for God knows why, except for somebody who was speaking for them, Sheikh Gumi. So if you look at the level at which extremism has spread in northern Nigeria, which mostly they have hidden away from the rest of Nigeria, you will never find out. So because of power, they brought in terrorists to the border of Nigeria. I didn't say that. Somebody told us this man. We have a confession that the media has not given appropriate attention. Kaubaraje Alaji was a leading chieftain of the APC, and he has confessed that they imported the foreign mercenaries who have become bandits. Oh, he has confessed. How much more evidence do you need? He has confessed that they imported them for the elections. Oh. This is public. Why is the media not following up? Why are we not asking for accountability? So it seems very clear to me and to so many others. If you're in the public space, you hear people talking and pointing fingers. The ruling party is the direct. I think uh, there is an issue with that uh, uh, video. Um, I'm trying to uh, fix that. Let me check. Just a sec. Let's try it again. We have a confession that the media has not given appropriate attention. Kaubaraje Alaji was a leading chieftain of the APC, and he has confessed that they imported the foreign mercenaries who have become bandits. Oh, he has confessed. How much more evidence do you need? He has confessed that they imported them for the elections. Oh. This is public. Why is the media not following up? Why are we not asking for accountability? So it seems very clear to me and to so many others. If you're in the public space, you hear people talking and pointing fingers. The ruling party is the direct sponsor of terrorism and insecurity in Nigeria. My name is Martin Onobu. I said it. APC is the direct sponsor of insecurity and terrorism in Nigeria. Ask me for the evidence. What are the facts? Good. I just gave you confession of Kaoba Raje. Exactly. That's number one. Number two, Mieti Allah made a public statement that if you want peace in your state, don't call any meeting. Provide land for Fulanese in your state. Public statement. Mieti Allah. Mieti Allah is a collaborator with the ruling party. We had a report that the ruling party funded Mieti Allah to the tune of a hundred billion. I wasn't there where the payment was made, but, but, but that's in the public domain. We had an official report that the government of Nigeria was going to establish a radio station exactly. in collaboration with Mieti Allah. We are Fufu the Fulani. Uh, tribal dialect will be the language of communication. Now, interestingly, I have the number of the rifle. I can send it to you by SMS. I just need to check my records. I have the rifle number. We have it the authority of retired uh, Colonel Inyam, that the Fulani headsmen repelled in Ogoja were using Nigerian army rifles from the barracks in that vicinity. And that the soldiers came to collect the rifles back. Now, who is the commander-in-chief of the Nigerian armed forces? Who should be responsible for the activities of these armed forces? We have it on the authority of General Danjuma. Danjuma has commanded these forces. We have it on the authority of General Danjuma. 
that the armed forces are conniving with the bandits that are killing citizens. How much more evidence do you want? How much more? How much more? Before these charlatans came to power, it was Boko Haram. Until Boko Haram now metamorphosed into Iswap and uh, Ansaru, Fulani bandits, and, don't, and on and on and on, operating the same way. They have taken over the major highways in northern Nigeria. Major highways, they've taken over them. Kaduna, Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, wherever. They've taken over everywhere. The forest in northern Nigeria, they make it look like the forest in northern Nigeria is so big that Nigeria has no capacity to map the place and locate those the camps of the terrorists. Of course, they know where they are. This government told the military to always play a defense. A defense means whenever the terrorists come to attack, the military should push them back. So in the process of pushing them back, if they kill any of them, fine. If they arrest any of them, they will process them and uh, release them through the rehabilitation program funded that nobody even have a clue how much they are i mean they are spending to rehabilitate terrorists in nigeria nobody have a clue but nigeria is rehabilitating and nigeria has rehabilitated according to them this government has rehabilitated over seven thousand repentant terrorists and they have released them back into the society so they told the military in nigeria to always play defense whenever they want to do any photo op they will mobilize the military to start bombing empty forests, bombing here and there, make them look like they are actually doing something. But that same day, you will receive the news of uh, numbers of people killed, slaughtered by either bandits and what have you. And they have the capacity to shoot down a fighter jet. The Taliban's waited for 20 years for America to spend, America and their American allies, to spend their trillions of dollars in trying to make a stable democracy for them in Afghanistan. But do you know what happened? Afghanistan has 300 strong military and air force. Nigeria has about a 400 to 450,000 strong military and air force. The day the Taliban took over when they began the onslaught and started taking over the, the provinces, the, the regions, and the rest of that, those who were there, who are also Afghanis themselves, in the military and the rest of them, they were told by their commanders not to resist. They should just let them have it. So that put to shambles the American style of democracy or the Western style kind of democracy to what the people of Afghanistan themselves possibly want, Islamic State. Some said, no, they don't want it, but it's a state of war, our use of force and what have you. But guess what? There was no single resistance from the 300,000 um, 300, strong military, no jet, no nothing. They just handed over all the military uh, weapons, uh, the MVs that, uh, you know, this MV is called, this uh, armor tank left by American uh, government, I mean, American uh, government, all the military, all the military hardware. No single shot was fired. And today, eh, they called it peaceful takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban, who have ruled, they ruled before, right? And under their own Islamic Sharia law, women are not allowed to go to school. Presently, they said, oh, no, 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 we're going to let them continue to go to school. The past 20 years has seen improved education for girl, child, uh, women, women having their own, uh, uh, you know, having access to their own resources by, you know, going, getting education, and getting jobs and all these things. So in Sharia, in this guy's kind of extremist Sharia, women are not allowed to get education. And if you fail, or if you if you if you 
send your children to any school, you will be punished and you can get killed for it. Now, that is bad, but they said, no, 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 we're not going to do that again. In northern Nigeria, there are people with this same mentality. Unfortunately, they are in government. So if you wake up tomorrow and they said the ISIS of northern Nigeria, they have taken over the entire northern Nigeria and they have started the, the massive uh, slaughtering of uh, those they will call infidels the Christians in northern Nigeria and anyone that doesn't agree with their style of Islam, this is something that you would think Nigeria would never allow that to happen. 75,000 is the stronghold of Taliban in, the, in Afghanistan. 75,000, 300,000 army couldn't stop them because they choose never to fight. Today in Nigeria, they have Islam, I mean, what you got, they have fulanized the Nigerian military, they have fulanized the Nigerian security agencies that uh, information, the only information that really matters to them is any information that says people are asking for their own country or for self-determination. But before they came in, they had the kind of this mentality. You remember this guy? That has become so incompetent. We'll be praising them and say that, oh, terrorism is happening. Jonathan is doing nothing. Well done, Jonathan. Are we supposed to do that? We are in opposition. Our job is to look at even good things that they are doing and say they are not doing it well. That is the job of opposition. So we have no apologies for pointing out to, uh, to Nigerians that this government is incompetent and has failed to provide security. If you say we are politicizing it, that's the problem so that we can't politicize it. Okay? Mm. Are we politicizing breathing of air? Every Nigerian can breathe air. We can't politicize it because there is no problem there. But if you fail to supply petroleum products and we say you are, you are failing, you say we are politicizing it. Fix the problem so that we don't politicize it. If you say that uh, there is terrorism, we are politicizing it. Eliminate terrorism. Five years ago, nobody is talking about terrorism in Nigeria. Under Jonathan, it has become an industry. And we, we should not take advantage of their failings so that we secure the votes of Nigerians in the next elections. There must, there must be something wrong with them. We have, tried, we have made suggestions to the government on how to improve security. They have ignored it. They have set up five different committees that have given them recommendations how to address this problem of terrorism in the last three years. They have not implemented one. They are incompetent. But they try to blame other people. So at this, uh, at this stage that we are right now with terrorism in Nigeria, what do you think is the solution, especially on how to rescue the girls? Look, the government has the solution to this problem. Several committees have given them recommendations. They should just implement the recommendations in their drawer. Okay? As for rescuing the girls, we have seen examples of what countries do when this situation happens. You should have military action on the one hand and negotiation on the, on the other hand. You should not foreclose anything because the lives of your citizens are at risk and you don't want to lose one life. You don't want to lose the life of one person. You don't want to lose the life of 250 girls. So whatever it takes to rescue those girls should be done. If one of these girls was Jonathan's daughter, the story would be different. Hmm. The only reason why these girls are still in captivity is because they are not the daughter of any important man in Nigeria, and we know it. And if you say I'm politicizing terrorism, go and rescue the girls so that I don't have a basis to politicize it. So are, you, are you in support of uh, negotiation? <laughs> that was Hel Rufaya before he became the Dracula of Kaduna he is now made Kaduna the hellfire that you have been reading about. More school, more children, more university students have been kidnapped. College students have been kidnapped in Kaduna. More people have been killed in Southern Kaduna than you can ever imagine. I'm talking about thousands of people. Just this morning, five people got killed in the same Southern Kaduna. In Jaws, 22 people got killed two days ago who were coming back from uh, Islamic uh, New Year prayer. Many, many people have uh, sold their properties in Northern Nigeria to pay ransom to terrorists. What do you think? All the money, the hundreds of millions and billions of naira that they, have, uh, they are paying to the terrorists every week in that northern Nigeria, what do you think they use the money for? By alleging weapons. The weapons to further 
intimidate and threaten civilians into perpetual fear as government abandoned them. Families are selling their properties in northern Nigeria to go and pay ransom to terrorists who keep their children. As you are watching this video, eh? from just uh, November last year, 2020, to July 2021, eh? they have kidnapped over 2,000 uh, school children. And as you are watching this video, over 1,300 of them are still in the captivity, in the hands of their captors, including children as young as seven years old. Their parents are everywhere, abandoned by the government of this kind of uh, hell of fire. They brought them, they brought those terrorists. And it won't cost them. They told the military not to, not to what? Not to attack them, not to root them out of that place. Nigeria has the capacity to uproot them, but no. They gave them the field to expand. And they have now covered the entire northern Nigeria, including Middle Belt. Everywhere they is covered. They've covered everywhere now. So what do you think, how long do you think it's going to take if they decide to just uh, stage an onslaught with what happened in, uh, in Afghanistan, an inspiration for somebody like uh, Issa Pandemic? Do you remember Issa Pandemic? Somebody who is very, very passionate about the Taliban. I believe he's buzzing right now. This guy is now the Minister of Communication for Nigeria. I want you to watch this first. Let me see if I can take off... Uh, all this on my screen so that I can share this with you. It's a pandemic. The Nigerian Minister of Communication, the man in charge of all your data in Nigeria, your communication, your phone calls, your emails, your bank transactions, and every other thing, everything that is uh, digitally connected, this guy has your data. But guess what? He is a Taliban in Nigeria. I want to look at you. 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 To the extent that, say, Kapore, so Kapare, you want to look at you. You want to look at you. You want to look at Afghanistan. So, but according to the Adini, Kuche Nitua, Kuche Bauta, wa Allah, Kuche Karantad, Adini, Allah, Abu Kananga, Bambu Kapore, Musamman, Asahunga, Ba, USA, United States of America, one in your tire, Musa Hankali. According to the second you will listen to any little more snaga in other Samudama launching attack account. That's, you know, the infidels. The infidels are those, well, the Americans are infidels, according to the Minister of Communication in Nigeria now. Here is another one. Saboda kauta ta zato zuwa ga jama'ar da suka bukaci ai tunatarwa akan wannan al'amari din babban abin da ya fara zuwa cikin tunani na zai iya yuwa nayi kuskuren tunani shine ɗan uwa ahalin suna da suka bukata shine mutanen Taliban da suka rayuwa Afghanistan Allah ya jarrabi ahalin suna da dama a duniya da kaunar su Allah ya zayyana mutane da dama da ikon Allah mutunta su da musfatan alkhairi saboda alamomin alkhairi da ake gani tare da su bayan ga wannan kuma a wani janibi sai aka samu wasu jama'a daga cikin kafurai western wall ba su da target a duniya sai bata su a idan yan uwan su musulmai hatta ma idan kafuran ta bangaren jingina musu abun da ba su aikata ba you get what i mean now this guy is a preacher he had this mosque okay he had people that they told these stories to every day. And they, they point at you and me as infidels. Not just that. Here is another one. Raka mu'a fahimtar muna rukwa Allah ya kai moranda hata kutin na ki aljuhu mwada chira kutu ajiki. Don taswiri kwa ta kwa ta baba bukada nsa dunia sede adarura. Ama hata wana baka da kawle maale ni de adunia deche halane. Sai dai kawai darura to Allah ya fitar da mu a cikin wannan mu kai matakin da kudi ma mun fi karfin taswiri ba ma bukatan taswiri a jiki a addinin mu taswiri ko hoton sahabi ne ai ba addini bane ajiyewa saboda ka hatta wannan Allah ya kai mu da wannan Gregorian date kalandar Arna dake jikin kudi 
Allah ce wa ma kataluhu wa ma salabuhu walakin shubbiha lahum na an kashe Isa alayhi salam duk wannan ba mu bukatan sa kuma in Allah ba mu dama duk za a gusar da shi insha Allah ta'ala I didn't say those words but I can interpret them I didn't say those words he said them it's a pandemic it's a patantami a jihadist the Taliban who is in charge of the data communication and information about all Nigerians in Nigeria as we speak, especially if you have already linked your own uh, SIM card and the rest of that. They look forward to a day that the Gregorian calendar, January, February, March, all of that will be gone. That all the images you have on your Naira notes will carry the image of the prophets. That... Uh, the currency in their pockets will be written not in this your naira nonsense and what have you it will be written in arabic the way they want it everything will be in arabic and this guy is talking about nigeria what kind of mentality will make somebody who should understand that uh, nigeria is not limited well to northern nigeria even northern nigeria is not only a, an islamic region but such person rules to power is in power. He's going to probably be governor sometime soon. He's going to be anything. And these are the guys who are also going to listen to you because you are a Christian from another part of Nigeria. Or maybe you are not, uh, if you are not a full but you are a Muslim, maybe they can pardon you. I mean, they believe that they have the control to tell you if you have the right to be anything. Like we are just like secondary to them. <laughs> you know. But I love it when they pretend and try to pretend and say, no, 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 no. That's not what it means. Especially when they can have access to free money from Nigeria. So tell me, the people who have this mentality, somebody like that, if uh, the Boko Haram, ISIS, if they say they have taken over Kano, They've taken Shokoto, they've taken Adamawa, they have taken Niger, they have taken uh, out of 19 states, they have taken about 16. These are the guys that will pledge their loyalty to ISIS and the government of uh, Sharia Caliphate. And I'm asking, oh, I'm so sorry, uh, child of the rising sun. I have, you know, I concentrated so much on. Uh, <laughs> on what I'm saying, I didn't see the super chats. I'm seeing it now. Igbo kwenu, odudu a kwenu, midu bet kweze no. Hey, sorry I missed that. Hmm? You have a minister that believes that one day, and that day should come soon, when all of these things will come to reality, where they can really live in an Islamic caliphate, Islamic country. But Nigeria is not an Islamic country. You know that. But you can continue to tell yourself that. Nigeria is a member of IOC, Islamic Organization Council or something. IOC. Do you know that? That Nigeria is a member of uh, that Islamic, uh, what have you, right? And who we'll, we'll, we'll drag them there? Eh? The people who believe that uh, Nigeria is more Islamic. Now all of them are just the dragon. So if they wake up tomorrow and they say they have taken over those places and they have declared caliphate and they've taken over Abuja or they are coming to Abuja, <laughs> oh, we are going to Abuja like uh, the Taliban did in Afghanistan. That we are coming to Kabul. We will surround. You know, Abuja is in the center. By the time they say they have taken over Kogi, say, eh, but Kogi is not uh, as a uh, sit down there. You already have them in southern Nigeria as well. All they need to do is that once they take over Abuja, they will just tell all of us, the rest of us in southern Nigeria, to surrender. Oh yeah, all of you surrender, or else we are coming to Lagos, we are coming here, we are coming there. And, and I like it when you say, Mahigun, that is impossible. Eh, what are we going to use to fight? We are the only one being disarmed. The terrorists are not disarmed. They are not. They have piles of weapons to wreak havoc anytime they want. 
and they are not going to move those weapons into our they didn't move those weapons into our communities by just uh, moving cows they have other means and it's just a call we are surrounded already i can tell you confidently now that on the last i mean on the last count we have over 1748 illegal poachers in Yoruba land who have occupied different camps in Yoruba land. Imagine having 1,748 terrorist camps in Yoruba land alone. They say, ah, that is an exaggeration. I like it when you said it's not going to happen. But I ask you, what would we use? What are we going to use to defend ourselves when we see those uh, who claim to be the political leaders from, uh, from Southern Nigeria collaborating with uh, the Nigerian authority that won't fight a terrorist, but collaborating with them to disarm everyone from Southern Nigeria that will have the capacity to muzzle up, to, to, you know, to stand up and push them back. I mean, what do we have to fight? When those who stood up, stood up, and you see the likes of Egumi defending terrorists up and down, these are the people that are going to say, well, if for sanity's sake, the military of Nigeria has already been compromised, you know that. So how long do you think it's going to take them to just say all the military in northern Nigeria, all the police in northern Nigeria, everybody should just ignore the ISIS once they are coming? And uh, do you actually know how ISIS fight and not these terrorists, how they fight? They don't go about with uh, the, your own kind of, you know, uh, Nigerian contingent that will, you know, they will be moving in their convoy of uh, armor tank, this and that. This guy uh, goes about with more than uh, 500 fighters. So imagine when 500 people with 500 AK-47, with God knows how many life um, uh, rounds of ammunition, maybe two 200 rounds of ammunition, like one, one person will be able to fire 200 shots and multiply that by 500. And imagine the havoc they can wreck when they come. That is why Nigerian military run, when they indeed come, when they move in. And you have them in thousands I don't think their number is up to Nigerian military, but because the Nigerian military, the Nigerian security forces, they are already compromised. They are the ones who will give the intel to the people to go and fight them. They are also the ones that will also give the intel to the terrorists to ambush their own, uh, their own uh, soldiers. We have seen it many times. Yes, we have. We have seen where Nigerian Air Force was firing bomb, firing shot at the Nigerian soldiers instead of firing at the terrorists. We have seen a lot. A long story short, does answer super sorry, does answer super chat at end of show. I actually answer super chat right on the show. If I see it, you know, if I actually see them, I will mention them. I'm expected to. So, but sometimes the comments can be so many, and it will just be a little distraction in a way. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, a long story short. I am an American. Are most of these conflicts religious and communist rebels, or are these decade-long disputes? Uh, let me answer that question. Uh, a long story short, you are an American. Uh, when we talk about the uh, ISIL growing in Nigeria, it all started from, you probably have heard about Boko Haram, Boko Haram. You probably also, also have read uh, some have heard about uh, the kidnapping of uh, school children in Nigeria. All these were acts of terrorism that Nigeria was managing before this gang of uh, crook took over government in Nigeria in 2015. And they took over government in Nigeria in 2015 simply uh, because they promised to end Boko Haram. So six years after that, we are no longer dealing with Boko Haram. We are now dealing with Boko Haram that has now metamorphosed into a bigger thing pledged allegiance to ISIL, the Islamic State of uh, uh, Iraq or Iran, the ISIS that many of you know in America very well. However, pledging them, they now call themselves the uh, Islamic State of West Africa province. Deadly. The reason why you haven't heard much of them in America is because they are not as uh, 
coordinated uh, as uh, those terrorists, uh, Americans chase to the valley of uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. In Nigeria, they have not started staging an attack on America, but they have killed over 250,000 Nigerians in the last 12 years alone. But shockingly, this government that gave them that few day, the, the same government put together a program called Operation Safe Corridor. And that program is just to rehabilitate any repentant terrorist without any law, without any, uh, what do you call, any legislation to back that up. And this is their own way of fighting terrorism in Nigeria. And in the last six years, this government has released over 7,000 repentant terrorists, they call them. But rather than for those repentant terrorists to give information on how to get or to end the terrorism in Nigeria, they ended up going back into that same act to the communities they destroyed. The numbers of those killed, the numbers of those displaced keeps growing every day. And as you, as we, you, know, as you are watching this video, there is no single one of them standing trial for any of this uh, crime. You can also use uh, Google in a way. Uh, it is not uh, primary, It is not about uh, tribal clashes, okay? It is uh, majorly about, uh, you know, something we call ethnic subjugation campaign. It is about uh, power grab and land grab. Nigeria is structured in a way that uh, somebody who, uh, who holds the power at the center, yeah, can actually either crush, uh, you know, any act of, uh, you know, rebellion and all that, or kind of, uh, you know, protect it. And in the other hand, Nigeria government seems to be protecting that today. Now, we have the Fulani terror, I mean, Fulani arts men. Yeah, these are also ethnic nationality in Nigeria. Nigeria is made up of uh, over 250 nationalities that make up a country called Nigeria, right? Out of these 250 nationalities, yeah, only one, has pushed all the rest of the uh, country uh, to the point of uh, demanding for a breakup and break away from Nigeria, okay? Only one. And this particular group are called the Fulani uh, armed terrorists. These guys are known as the fourth deadliest terrorist group in the whole world. But in Nigeria, they are kings. They dine with those in power. They are protected from any arrest. Whatever crime committed by them will be swept on. And those whoever, whoever speaks up against uh, any of this are considered as enemies of the country or those who are trying to create problems. Yeah. So that's pretty much uh, what the story about, I mean, about Nigeria is. And the only objective of this terrorist group is that they want an Islamic country. They want Nigeria to be an Islamic caliphate. And they said education is an aram, which simply means education is a sin. In northern Nigeria today, more than 80,000 schools have been shut down by government because the terrorists won't stop kidnapping school children. It has gotten to a stage that uh, the government can no longer protect or, or uh, protect the children, or the government can no longer in any way. Eh? secure or guarantee the safety of everyone that will go into any school as we speak in Kaduna State, they have over 5,000 schools shut down and it's unfortunate that uh, even when people came together to say we can stop these marauders we can stop them before they advance to other parts of Nigeria the government of Nigeria tagged them as terrorists it's so unfortunate by the way you can't be an activist in Nigeria of today. If you're an activist, you'll be treated as a terrorist. If you're a terrorist, you'll be treated as just, you know, a disgruntled, uh, somebody who's just angry, but can be placated. That's our story. Uh, a long story short. I'm sorry that I didn't make my story short because I believe I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to others who are also listening. Uh, I prefer to get information from sm small YouTubers like this channel. Um, though this conflict have, I mean, I mean, sorry, does this conflict have anything to do with the answers from last summer? It is all complicated. Answers protest is also reactions of uh, the younger people in Nigeria to what I just told you now. 
uh, young people were so tired of police brutality, where the states sponsored state brutality profile. I mean, profiling of young young people. If you look smart, if you dress nice, your style of hair. I mean, your your style of hair, the way you dress, and all of that will set you up in Nigeria, where the security agent, the police, right, uh, you know, can extort you, you know, beat you up, brutalize you, you know, and in fact, you can get locked up. In fact, you can get jailed for other Trump top uh, charges. It was bad. But there's, there's, there's a police outfit called uh, SARS. Their full name, um, the full meaning of that is the, you know, a special anti-robbery squad. Their job was to, I mean, is to go after violent crimes like armed robbers, you know, uh, kidnappers, uh, cultists, every other violent crime. That's their job, right? But they didn't, they are not doing that. The SARS officials are always everywhere. They don't dress like police officers. They disguise in unmarked cars. They hang about in every corner, in every city, and they target young people. They profile them. Then they take them and call them, you know, they actually tag them fraud stars. They are not empowered to investigate their fraud. They are not empowered to investigate an internet fraud or what have you. It was just a means of extortion. Many, many young people have been killed. Some people have lost uh, their limbs, lost uh, their mobility and all of that due to injury they suffered in the hands of this uh, dreaded police elite force in Nigeria. So the young people now came together to protest so that the government of Nigeria will reform that police force. They will stop them. They will, they will identify them. They will have identity. They will carry body uh, camera and all of that, which will make uh, their activities uh, a little bit monitored, right? But rather than the government of Nigeria to listen to the young people, the government of Nigeria, under this same government we are talking about, unleashed the police and the military on them. Hundreds of them were killed in a space of uh, 20 days. The last one they did was on the 20th of, uh, August, I mean, 20th of uh, October 2020, where they killed over 87 young people at Lekito Gate. The irony of it is this, and as sad as it is, right? Those young, young people, they believe that if they were, if they were, if they were holding the Nigerian flag, if they were waving the Nigerian flag, the military, being what they were told, would never shoot at them. Guess what? They shot and killed over 87 of them, took their bodies away. Some of them jumped into the river, some drowned. And to this day, the government of Nigeria eh, denied that that ever happened. So NSAS is not uh, a conflict of ethnic and what have you. It's just the reaction of the young people to part of this, uh, you know, uh, tyrannical system being run in Nigeria. And the same government that is clamping down on the uh, protesters, peaceful protesters, uh, you know, self-determination uh, campaigners and the rest, this and, the, and then the activists and the, you know, what have you, Nigeria, the same government, right, is giving a complete uh, free pass to terrorists that have been kidnapping people, that have been killing people, like needlessly. I'm talking about complete program where villages will be ransacked and trust me, hundreds and hundreds of people will be massacred and they are just numbers in Nigeria. That's how sad it is. And I hope uh, if you have time, uh, take on to the internet, read a bit about us because even those who come from uh, Southern Nigeria, who are supposed to be the leaders of the people from the Southern Nigeria, uh, Southern Nigeria is not uh, an Islamic region. We are pretty much like uh, a mixed uh, society where everybody just respect everybody's uh, belief and you know whatever faith you want to have, just live and let live is what the Southern Nigeria is, right? But for political exigencies, for political uh, personal, uh, you know, aggrandizement, we call it, right? self uh, reward the southern leaders they don't have uh, a solution there was a time they asked these guys have not just uh, destroyed nigeria whatever is left called uh, nigeria unity or nigeria whatever anything right they have not just uh, destroyed that right they have uh, gone beyond any any imaginable uh, what do you call it, retrogression, that even just uh, today, or I think it was yesterday, uh, the the disgraced emir of Kano, uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, another froster being propelled and protected by the same uh, 
uh, Kaduna Littlefinger, Eru Fire. He came out and he said, you know what? This last six years of Nigeria, Nigeria has retrogressed back to 40 years. That all the gains made in the past 40 years in Nigeria, everything is gone now. There is no more unity. There is nothing that makes it. And if nothing is done, Nigeria is going to break up. And I can tell you, everybody is feeling and having the symptom that something is coming and it's bigger than what has ever happened before. They asked Tifnumbu, what do you think Bukwari should do? Especially for those of you who are looking forward to a time that uh, Tifnumbu will become uh, or will be your president. Tifnumbu will change Nigeria because he had the solution. Tifnumbu, if you have any idea, can you please share it with us, especially with this government that you brought to power? What do you have to say? And we are competing, we are competing with bank robbers and uh, bandits to recruit from the youths who are unemployed. That is 30 percent unemployed. Recruit 50 million youths into the army and the northern uh, Take away from the recruitment force. What do we eat? Cassava, uh, Bado, uh, corn, and the morning, uh, yam in the afternoon. It's growing here. You create demand as consumption. And I believe that uh, those who are waiting for 2023, they are waiting to join Tifnumbu Army. 50 million youths, recruit, recruit. And they have done so much to us that those you probably would want to speak up for the sake. Uh, solo or nows. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mayegun. Tell them what they cannot believe easily. 2022 is a takeover year, but Mumus will not believe because they cannot see. Sad, is it? Very sad, uh, Solo. Uh, also, uh, Child of uh, the Rising Sun. I believe that's a Dutchian as well. Somebody from uh, the Dutland. Okereju, I want you born for a new Super chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have an American. Uh, long story short is his name. And uh, he's there with us right now enjoying these chats. So let's make it more interesting for everyone. The man you just watched right now is the man they are hoping to take over from the one that is there now. First, let me show you the one that is there now. If you are watching this uh, broadcast for the, I mean, for the first uh, time, the man that is there now is called Bokuari. This is his uh, first image that we can actually use to say, uh, you know, when he became the president. And uh, yeah, I hope this helps. This is Bokuari, the one in charge now of Nigeria now. Okay. The one that is asking the rest of Nigeria to give land for Ruga, rural grazing area, they called it. They said we need to create a Ruga for these invading aliens of northern Nigeria if we want peace. But the man that wants to create Ruga, Rura grazing area, or Katu colony, or whatever they are planning to create for them to bring peace to all of us, he cannot even define it. Buari. They said what he said. I mean, meanwhile, the policy is called National Livestock Program. You remember that? When they asked that, uh, what is Nigeria doing to stop these uh, invaders that have taken over all the forests in Nigeria, all the forests in Nigeria? And they said, what are you doing about it? They said, the only solution is to give them land so that you can build them ranches. You can build them schools. But initially, they told us that these people killing us, kidnapping us, they were from Niger Republic. They were from Chad. They were from Sudan. They were from Libya. They were from Mali. These are African countries, North African countries that share border with Nigeria. 
And sadly, sadly, eh, nobody has any land to give to them. And they said, we have to pay the price. But what is livestock, Buhari? What is livestock. Livestock. Hmm? livestock, livestock land. National, I, I would talk about it. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. I think he's. He, he, uh, he yeah. doesn't know. These are all directed at Mr. As President. I, so corruption. Yes, let me. Cancel. No. He can talk for himself. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. I want Nigerians to give you another opportunity to do another for you. Why? Well, I. I he doesn't know. I, um. So that one that I spoke earlier, the Mr. Agbado Khan Ege, eh? The one that spoke about Agbado Ege is the one that they are waiting to take over from the one that doesn't know. That's 2023. And I'm asking, is it going to come and take over and be the one that will run away? Just like uh, Ghani, the American made president of uh, Afghanistan, have to run away. Or how do you think these criminals who said they are not willing to leave power in 2023? Because they have another four years and they can they can you know they can keep the presidency as long as they want. If they finally lose out about the power and they give it to this one that is uh, with walking stick, this one, the one that is with the red car, by the way, is the former governor of Lagos State, is the Afobaje of all other political hooligans in uh, southwest nigeria they call him the genius he is the one the chief landlord of the mega slum of africa called lagos he does that picture was taken in london they said he, he had knee surgery we don't know what happened to his knee he's an old man maybe he's getting arthritis you remember that his hands are already shaking and uh, all of that? He's an old guy. He said he's uh, 69 years old. But some people said that he's already 79 or close to 80. How can you be 69 years old and your daughter is uh, 58 or 59? Eh? Fala Shade Tinumbu. Well, it's none of my business. But that's the guy. That would you know the one with the idea. That's the one advising the one who is wearing his uh, what do you call it? Wearing his uh, face mask on his neck, yeah. And the one there called uh, Tifnumbu, his best idea for the current problem of Nigeria is this. And we are competing, we are competing with bank robbers and uh, bandits to recruit from the youths who are unemployed. That is 30 percent unemployed. Recruit 50 million youths into the army and the northern cities. Take away from the recruitment course. What do we eat? Katlava, Abadu, uh, uh, Kong, and the morning, uh, yam in the afternoon. It's growing here. You create demand as consumption. Very, very smart, Tifnumbu. I bet uh, Lagos Abobaku are currently looking at me and they're like, uh, you just ate Tinumbu, leave him. He's going to be presidiot. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. Are you guys not the ones there? Are you not the ones who are going to make him? So go on and do it. Good luck. You know what I mean? Good luck with that.